panting noise is my dog. Um, it's a moderately hot day and she has joined me for this job. There we go. Never mind. Siphons. Always fun. What do they do? We'll get to that. Classic problem. Okay, flushes, no problem. But will it flush again? Let's wait. This toilet has been suffering from... Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. First job is lift the lid. See, it's refilling. The water's blue because the owner puts a blue block in there. Don't do that. This is the siphon. That's your handle. See, it operates the siphon. This is the ball cock float there, you just see. And a loose toilet seat. I'll have to fix that as well. So basically the ball cock floats on the water. When it reaches a set level, it turns the tap off. Like so. Quite ingenious. Okay, perfect. So, will it flush again? There we go. This is the classic problem. It's not quite... So if you imagine the siphon... Here we have a brand new siphon. This diaphragm here, that's sat in there. This chamber here is full of water. It's actuated by the handle. And it, whoop, like that, pulls up, draws the water, then it siphons through. It's like when you're being sick and you're going, whoop, whoop, whoop. at the moment, this is dry heaving. Whereas this new one, this is going to be like a 12 pointer. You may or may not get that. Now, you have got two choices when it comes to replacing these or fixing these. You can either replace just, I'm stripping apart the clean one, you can either just replace the actual diaphragm, this part here, so you just literally lift the spring and that collar off, take the diaphragm off, there you go, replace it with a new one, and then reassemble the complete unit. That one to there, that one there, that one there. There we go. Just make sure it's located on these pegs there. You can buy seal kits for these. You can also, I believe, just buy the material itself. There we go, in. So, um, Two out, which is interesting. Just in case yours flies apart as well, and then your plastic washer. Reassembled. Best bet is buy. If you're going to replace the entire siphon unit, which is what I've been asked to do here, instead of just a diaphragm, buy the same one. It comes with this upright here. I can't remember what they call this part. Anyway, what you have got is I'll show you on this one. This peg here. Push from behind just to get it started. Push like that. Pull that peg out, separate. Please excuse the voices in the background, by the way. Okay, and come on. There we go. So it slides. Got that. There, slides off. There we go. Do the same with the old one. So, what we're we going to need to do. I thought that was finger tight, but it wasn't. Ideally, you want to undo the handle. 
hand off for God's sake, don't drop the screw down in. If you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves, two reasons. One, Legionella, two, I've got massive blisters on my hands. I don't really want, okay. Take that arm off, take it off of the old siphon, put it to one side. There we go. So now, same thing again, that peg, if you can find it, come on. Oh, okay, I've got one to come from this side. Right. There we go. Now don't worry at this point, nothing is going to leak. Absolutely nothing will leak. Don't have to worry about water going everywhere. Put that up, empty it. Let's see what the problem is. Ah, problem is, it's wrong diaphragm, it doesn't fit. So someone's had to do it fitting it before and has fitted a new diaphragm which doesn't actually fit. So that's not going to create enough of a seal on this for it to work. The other way so that these can fail is that the diaphragm can just split. Right, all cracked, knackered, buggered, you know, it's it's gone. Then okay. that's one side. And then a new one. Drop it down in. Right. And you fit. When you fit the new siphon, what you have to do is remember, and I'll show it in a second, there's that peg on the riser. I'll flash up what the actual name for it is. That needs to be aligned with the body of the siphon. There we go. Push it down, make sure the seal at the top locates in. Then get your peg. I'll show all this out of the water in a second. Come on, Peg. In you go, little bug, Jesse. Okay. In, in, perfect. Um, screw hole facing up. Turn the handle to the desired location. Align, see the dent there from the grub screw. Align with that. Right, to be honest, I'm just gonna, it's not quite straight, I'm just gonna push it a bit further out. Hmm, I'm gonna jump back over anyway. Right then, so. Flash. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I've just done out of the water. This is the new riser. You can see it's exactly compatible. So you have to make sure that there lines up the corresponding section on the riser and then push them together. You need to line these holes here up, get the peg, oh I don't think I showed the holes, let make sure that these holes here line up, get the peg, push in, and you have to do that in the water, fine fine fine, toilet sorted, I haven't shown it in this video, obviously I'll do it, Depending on when the toilet was installed, you have water regs, and these holes here need to be these pegs or filler plugs basically need to be removed in order to reduce the capacity of the flush. Shouldn't really just push up and out. That reduces the flush. It's a legal thing, water saving. Most people though, you leave them that and you tell them what you've done. They'll probably put them back in because they want a big flush. He doesn't want a big flush. Now, I did exactly.
exactly what I said not to do and I dropped the screw. And you know what? Of course, the damn siphon is over the top of it. Uh, damn it. Ha ha ha, that's what you get for rushing.